In this tutorial, we'll be looking at Python's integrated development environment, also known as IDLE. This is the IDLE shell. You will see this the first time you open IDLE. It is very similar to the shell that you can open using your terminal, except that this one has code completion and syntax highlighting. Let's take a look at how that works. You will notice that this comment is highlighted in red. If you print something out, it will show up as different colors as well. So for example, the word print is in purple, the string is in green, and then the output is in blue. The nice thing about playing with the shell is that you can actually create functions and classes and pretty much anything else you want to do right there in the shell. And it even does indentation correctly. So let's take a look at this quick example here. All this function does is add two values together. We can call this function like so. And it returns a three like it's supposed to. In Python, you can actually concatenate strings. So this add function is actually smart enough to do that as well. So if we put together a string and another string, we'll end up with one big string, just like that. Another fun thing about you can use idle for is actually creating full-fledged code files. Let's create one of those. So here we have your normal editor. Let's bring this up here. We'll import the OS module. And if you want to see what the OS module has to set has in it, you just wait after you hit the dot and it'll pop up and show you all the different completions it can do. Or if you know what you want, you can hit dot and start typing and then hit tab and you'll try to guess what you want too, which is really handy. Let's go ahead and create that function we did earlier because I want to show you guys how this will work if we actually run it. We're going to save this. I'm going to replace my sample from earlier. Now if we run this in the shell, I'll bring up the shell and restart it. But you notice it didn't actually print out anything. That means that we didn't actually call print in there, so we need to actually call the function. So if we call it with a couple of values, we should get a result, and we do. You can also find out what all was imported by calling locals, which is a Python keyword. I didn't actually call it there. So if we call it, you can see that it has the OS module and the um, the add module, although the add the add function, I mean. Let's take a look at some of the other nice things you can do with Idle. If you go up to preferences, you can change all the different font faces and font sizes, and change the way that the code highlighting works. They have lots of different color things that you can change. These other two I don't really use all that often. I do like to change the startup to open in the edit window. So if you're going to use idle for your integrated development environment for a while, I recommend going in and doing that because you usually want to edit rather than opening the shell immediately. Otherwise, I just usually leave it alone. Under the file menu, Probably the, the coolest things in here are the class browser and the web, the path browser. Let's take a look at one of those. So now we'll look up the OS module. And this will allow you to actually browse the class that's in os.py. So you just go and you want to look at like the, the walk function. Double click that and it'll jump right down there for you. Another cool thing about idle is you can go over to options and code context if you hit that, it'll put this nice little gray area at the top of your frame. So when you're scrolling around, you can tell what function you're in. So right now we're going to enter the walk function. And the walk function just went outside of the window. But because we have this gray code context area enabled, you can tell that you're still within the walk function. If you disable it, you no longer know what function you're in. So when I'm playing with idle, I usually have code context code context enabled just so I know where I'm at in my code files. 
All right, let's take a look at the path browser. The path browser shows you what Python search is when you go to import a module. Since this is a new install of Python, there aren't that many paths that it looks on. So basically you'll notice it looks on the site packages area and a couple of others like Python 3.4. If you have a lot of items installed or you're doing a lot of editing, like I have some files in my documents folder, those will also be on the system path. And you can also add to the system path by importing sys and doing sys.path.append and that'll temporarily add a new path to your import path. And then the edit function, that method, I mean, <laughs> menu, has all of the stuff that you really could use in an edit menu, but it really isn't all that interesting. You can restart the shell here. Here's the debugger. I'm really not going to talk about the debugger here because I don't think it's all that useful. You can only use it in the idle shell and that kind of limits its usefulness in my mind. Um, I missed something in here I'm trying to find for you. Oh, I'm sorry. It's actually in the in this part. Some of the menus disappear depending on which um, part of the idle interface you're in. So if you're in an actual editor window, you'll have the format menu, and that'll allow you to indent blocks of code or unindent it. You can comment out blocks of code and tabify them if you need to and do all kinds of fun stuff. So let's go ahead and grab this piece of code and do some of those things so we can indent it and we realize that that's a bad thing, so we unindent it. Or we just cover that this code is bad, so we want to comment it out while we're debugging. And then when we resolve it, we can uncomment it. And there's lots of good stuff like that. You can also strip the white space, which can be helpful. If you have a lot of white space on the end, which you can't see. Sometimes you get that when you copy and paste from the internet. And other than that, most of these other items are pretty self-explanatory. I recommend going ahead and checking them out and making sure that you understand all the little idiosyncrasies of idle before you start using it. One other last tip that I want to leave you with is if you're going to use, if you're going to create uh, user interfaces like with WX Python or PyQt or anything other than TKinter, don't use this integrated development environment as idle is written with tkinter and it will interfere with wx python or pyqt in weird and unusual ways sometimes your scripts will work and run perfectly and other times they will crash unexpectedly other than that have fun playing with idle